Calgary tense. This is lesson two on loops. We are now going to use loops in Delphi. We're going to work with the for loop. A reminder, the reason for using loops, like the for loop, is to repeat state Delphi statements. Instead of typing out the Delphi statements, for example, if you want to display some a number or display a letter 10 times, we can do it in a loop by having one display statement. If you want to input 10 numbers, there's no need for us to use 10 variables. We can use one variable to input the number. Now to start, those of you who have forgotten, to start creating your Delphi program, we start, we go to File, New, BLC, VCL, Form Application. There's your form. You can increase the size of your form if you need to. Add the form. To save, to save it, you go to Save All. So it allows us to save it as a unit as well as a project. Clicking on Save All, you need to find a folder in which to save. We can create your own folder. You simply go New Folder. We'll call it Loops. We open the folder. The first is the unit, so we'll say loop one, your first program, underscore u, to indicate that it's a unit. Loop one, underscore p, to say it's a project. Now once we have saved it, we can start, we rename our form, we give it a caption and a name, Caption is what you will, what will be displayed on your form. We will say working for loop. And your name, form name form, we'll say loop. We're going to, we are going to put in a button for our first question. We will try a program, a little program to, a little code to run a loop. So we'll name the button, we'll call it question one. This is the button name, so BTN Q1. And the caption, which is what's gonna be visible on your GUI component. Question one. For output, we can simply output using a show message or we can use a rich edit or a mem display or T memo for mem output. A T memo. There again, you need to give the T uh, memo a name so we can use it within the program. We'll call it mem display. We, we do not need a caption here. We need to clear the lines within the memo so we can display easily. We can do that in the program, but we'll do it now in the, in the, the object inspector. Now your first question, we double click on question one. You can type in the code to run under button one. I'll write the question here for you. Question is to display the message. My first loop. Let's say 15 times. I have to display my first loop 15 times. Now we're going to write the code in here. Your for loop structure, for loop, 
is an unconditional loop. There's no condition. We know how many times to run. So there was not based on a condition. It runs it 15 times. In this example, it's going to run 15 times. Now we need a counter for the for loop. The integer uh, value is going to count. I C is four. I C is a sign equal to one two. We did, did all of this one to fifteen. So a for loop is going to run from one to fifteen. And you can press the escape key to get rid of the box that I had there. For I C is equal to one to fifteen. Now your for loop can have a begin and end if we're repeating two statements. Now we simply want one statement. So I'm not going to use the begin and end now. And the message single quotes my first uh, there are not, there's nothing in red here so there's no errors if you do make a mistake you'll find that it's being underlined in red so the loop will run from 1 to 15 and it's going to execute my first loop so we're going to save and test this Here's your button. If you click on the button, you got my first loop written 17 times. Okay, so we know it's running. It's one statement and it's repeated 17 times. If you include a begin and end here, it will still work because it's one statement. We will do programs with begin and end. Now, what happens if we have a semicolon here? Because at the moment there was no semicolon, we included this now. The semicolon ends at the end of the for loop, unless you have sub statements, which we will explain later on. But if we have a semicolon at the end of the for loop, what happens? I'm going to run this and we'll see. As you'll notice, first loop only appears once. If you have a semicolon at the end of the for loop, the for loop does not repeat the statements below it. The semicolon stops the for loop at that point. So we cannot use a semicolon at the end of the for loop. What we're going to do now is we are going to attempt a few more programs with the for loop. So we're going to add a few more buttons here and we're going to work with a few more programs. We have question two, we'll call this question two. and name it BTN question two. Remember caption is what's visible and when you name the component, it's the name that we're going to use in the program. So we will do two, two more questions for you. Okay, we have four buttons now. In question two, I've typed out the question for you already. In question two, it says input and name, display the name eight times. Now this requires an input, an input interface. So we also need, remember you need your counter for your loop. We need, when, if you input a name, it says one name. So that needs to be stored somewhere. So we'll put a variable s name of type, we'll add the variable s name of type string. The for loop will run again. One, two. This case is running. One, two. Eight. We need to simply display the name. So we don't, we need to do one thing, which is to display. We don't require, do not require a begin and end. Sorry, this is a for loop. We need to input one name so the input will appear before the for loop. The input is not repeated. You can put in a component, a t-edit, 
and read it from your t-edit or you can read it from an input box. The input box message enter name leave the other two for now empty we we'll simply enter name and no other messages we'll remind you how the input box works soon all right your display we're going to display this name so we go to mem display dot lines dot add and we need to display name there's no conversion because name is already a string my name is already a string so there's no need to convert running this and question two okay question two as i said we going to run it you enter name so the name is n the name appears so many times so now it's actually eight times so if you run another name call it uh, zuma so it's talking about zuma and that's eight as well so we're running eight times every time you enter a name it will display it eight times that is question two to display a name eight times The next question is question three. We're going to, going to look at the sum and average of six numbers. So here's our question. Input six numbers, find and display the sum and the average. When you answer this question, you need to ask yourself what needs to be in the for loop. It says six numbers. So your loop will run from one to six and you have to input the numbers in the for loop. All right, so that goes in the for loop. Now, when you're finding the sum and the average, the sum, you're adding all six numbers. So that when you're adding, the process should be in the for loop because you've got to add the six numbers. The average is calculated once based on the sum. Sum divided by six in this case gives you the average. So that's done outside this, the for loop. So whenever you're working or looping, you've got to ask yourself what goes in the, into the for loop. Now again, we need a counter here. Now, because we are working out the sum, we need something to add up all the numbers. So we're going to store a variable for sum. We are going to work at average. Average can be a fraction. So it can be a float, so a real number. We we'll use R, A, B, G for average, have real. And it could be a fraction. So simply, the first thing will be your, your for loop, your IC is assigned equal to one, two, six. Now we need to input the number and we need to add it. So we need a begin and an end. If you type in begin and press enter, it comes up automatically. If you're unsure when you, whether you need a begin and end, every for loop can use a begin and end. For example, in the one year where we enter the name, if you put in your begin and you press enter, the end automatically comes in there. So you can have a begin and end. Now here we do need a begin and end because there's two statements to be repeated. One is we want to enter the number. So I need a memory location to enter the number, a variable, so inum entering the number within the for loop so i num is equal to i num plus and i need to sorry i sum let's just look at i num first i num is your input box We enter number. And it's a format of an input box to be discussed again or revised in another lesson. But you're going to input a number. 
Now your number is of type string. We have to convert it to an integer. So it's string to int. We need to convert this number from a string to an integer so we can store it in an integer box. So the number has been entered. Now we need to add the number up. We need a sum. We need to start with zero. We've done this with flowcharts and so on. Right, sum starts with zero. You start with nothing and you add two. Add two sum. You're adding two sum your number that you entered. So sum is zero, you enter your first number, say five, then I sum will be zero plus five, which is five. Then it comes back up the for loop, it enters your next number, say it's 10, and I sum had five, it'll add 10 to five. So you get 15, first two numbers are 15. We need to display. Now your display, your output, there's only one sum to output. Right, up to six numbers, there's one total sum. So we need one, so it needs to be outside the for loop because you're displaying it once. The sum is, or the total is, you need to convert your sum to a string. So it'll be int to string. I sum. That's just sum. We also need to work out the average. So we can display, work, we can calculate it anywhere outside the loop. So I'm calculating it here. So our displays are together. I average is equal to I sum, the sum divided by six. Displaying. Your average is of type real, so it will be float string, float to string. Float to string. Our average, that's float to string. We can format it, but we'll keep it as float to string. The space here will allow space between your statement and your answer. Okay, so we, we initialize sum to zero, a loop runs six times, so we can input six numbers and add them up within the loop. Average needs to be calculated once, and we output both. Okay, we're going to, going to test this now. Learning question three, we are required to enter six numbers, so we enter even numbers, two, four, six, Eight, ten, twelve. That is your six numbers. Sum is forty-two and average is seven. Now if we if we run this again and take some random numbers here. All right, so we find the sum and the average. If you have the average has uh, fractions or numbers after your decimal point, like 14.67 or 667. This can be formatted to one decimal place, zero decimal place, or two decimal places. We're looking at the last question, question four. Question four says, states generate and display 20 random numbers in the range 1 to 100. Now your loop will run, this is your random number, your loop will run for 20 random numbers. Right, 20 random numbers, so your loop will run from 1 to 20. That's the first step, so the variable I see again. 
Now because we are generating random numbers, let's store the number. We only need one variable because we're going to generate it within the loop. Rather than write out 20 random statements, where you have num1 to num20, it's easier to have one variable for, for, for the number generated. So your for loop, If i c is equal to 1 to 20 to I'm going to I'm going to put a begin and end because we're doing two things. We are going to generate the number and display the number. To generate the number, i num is equal to it's random. Remember from, from 1 to 100, we said big minus small plus 1. So 100 minus 1 plus one, which is actually a hundred, plus the start of your range, which is one. That's your random statement. A random statement has been generated. Now we simply need to display. Here again, we need to convert it to, an, to a string. So it'll be int, to string, here's a random number. So we need a begin and end for the for loop and we're generating, there's a bracket missing here. We're generating a number, we're displaying. Come back, you generate a number, you display. It goes on 20 times. So let's test our loop. Testing question four. Now we simply have to press on question four Press the button question for question four and the numbers will be generated. And I will delete these numbers and we'll generate again. That will be a different set of uh, random numbers being generated. Okay, so we have answered four questions. I'll remind you very quickly about to round off. We simply had a simple for loop to display 15 times. There's no need, there's a, I was supposed to remove this. There's no need to have a semicolon. You can't, should not have a semicolon yet. There's no need for a begin and end, All right? So 15 times the statement is displayed. Now here, if you're entering a name once outside the loop, you're running from one to eight, you display within the loop. You, there's no need to be, have a begin and end. You can have one. It's not compulsory because it's one statement that is repeated. Now here we have to find the sum and the average. We need a begin and end because we, do, we are running two statements within the loop. We are input the number and we add the number. Average is calculated once, so it's outside the loop, and your displays are once, so they are outside the loop. The last one, we're generating random numbers. Your loop has to be run from one to 20, in the loop, we generate a number and we display the number. Boys and girls, try these examples and complete the rest of your application.